Penny Lane. Right, I'm going to do your um, requested video with regards to sterilizing how I do it for when I treat my orchids, be it repotting, be it uh, snipping off leaves, anything like that. The tools need to be pretty much clean, especially if you're dealing with, let's say, infected leaves, if you could consider there could be some rot or bacterial infections going on. You don't want to be spreading that between the orchid itself from one leaf to the next, or you don't want to spread it to other orchids. So every cut, this sounds pedantic, but it's kind of important. Every cut you make when it comes to foliage, the utensil, the scissors or the clippers need to be sterilized again to start with a clean blade. Now it sounds like a lot of faff for something that basically is one cut and move on. And if you only have one leaf to cut, then of course you don't have to keep repeating the process. However, I always store my utensils ready, sterilized, so that I can go and just cut on a whim when I see something. It is pretty straightforward because basically pure alcohol will take care of the majority of your sterilization. Now, I sterilize everything I reuse. Not everything with alcohol, of course, because if you're using leca or lava rock or any kind of inorganic media, you can just boil it and that'll take care of business. You can also use any kind of disinfectant. You don't have to use alcohol. I prefer it because it's cheaper, but anything with bleach in it, any kind of household disinfectant you can use as well. For me, I just use alcohol because it just comes in handy in so many varieties. I don't have to worry about what surface is going to be corroded or not. Some disinfectants can be very corrosive. So for me, for example, I always struggle with having my secateurs shiny. The blades always go nasty, even though afterwards I will put some oil on them. Other household products can, disinfectants can be extremely corrosive. So I stick with um, alcohol. Now what I do, I'm gonna take my flamethrower out of the way. What I do basically is take alcohol and just spritz it. Sorry for the jiggling, sorry for the jiggling. I just spritz it generously onto the secateurs, the blade. Now, basically you could just leave it and I recommend you just leave them to evaporate because that is actually the disinfecting phase. The alcohol itself is fabulous, but the rapid disinfecting, um, the rapid evaporation, that is actually what is sterilizing and disinfecting the blades. I do that, I'm not gonna do it now because it kind of repeats itself. I do that with any wire cutters, anything that would come in contact with an orchid. I do that with these little doohickeys that I make for my plant pots even though they're plastic coated every time I reuse them I spray them down with alcohol and then they just evaporate they're ready to go I also do that with any kind of these little mount cuttings that I make to keep them sterilized if I use them from one plant to the next same with any stakes that I keep from beta phalaenopsis or something like that. These will be alcoholed and sprayed down. And of course, my tooth, my toothbrush, <laughs> my paintbrush for the mealybugs and any kind of pests that I want to eradicate that are on the leaves that I can't wipe down. Sometimes there's sticky residue. This gets sprayed with alcohol at the tip and it's very saturated. And any bugs I can just brush off and drown in the crevices. If you looked at, if you saw my uh, orchid arsenal video, you would have seen my paintbrush as a valuable tool that I need. My snippers get the same treatment, also with the alcohol, and I keep these blades I, as long as possible without any tarnishing. I have not found, no matter how expensive the cutters are, I have not found them yet, any brand yet that will not get nasty looking doesn't mean they don't work it's just aesthetics but I don't know I just I don't like seeing my tools look like this the thing is with the evaporation 
So basically what a lot of others uh, would recommend to do to also get a much, I don't know how you can say, a much higher level of sterilization. When something's sterilized 100%, you can't go 200%. But there's a lot that will also flame their blades afterwards. And it is on. I don't know if you can see the flame. Be very careful with this. If the alcohol hasn't evaporated totally, you know the drill. You know what can happen. Be extremely careful with this method. I hardly, hardly do this method because I'm a little bit of a klutz, you know. I can do things quickly. I can do things slowly. I can make a mistake very quickly. So I try to eliminate any possible nasty accident just out of, you know, getting a bit complacent with dangerous materials. So I don't do it. I wait for my tools to actually just the alcohol to evaporate on it. But if you see that anywhere else, yes, it can be done. No, it's not a bad thing. Having said that, for me, if you use just alcohol, that's fine. If you leave the alcohol out of it, definitely flame it. If you don't use alcohol, definitely get there, get some heat on it, okay? So that you can eradicate any nasties that are clinging on there. I do the same thing with my tweezers. I only ever just spray them with alcohol and I leave them to evaporate and dry. Now the other thing is that hydrogen peroxide is quite important for any kind of fungal, bacteria, mold things. If you see a pot, an orchid, if you've bought one and you can see that there's like mold growing on it, using hydrogen peroxide 3% is a must. It will not harm the roots. I wouldn't go any higher and there's another thing that I've also heard a lot is that people don't want to spray hydrogen peroxide 3% on wet roots because it dilutes the process of the functionality of the hydrogen peroxide. Now in my opinion, from what I've seen and how I've operated, I always work with wet roots because it causes less damage, it makes them more pliable. And I always spray hydrogen peroxide 3% on wet roots and it still fizzes away. You will see that if you use it on anything organic, you can actually hear it fizzing away and bubbling away on any surface that it is actually targeting and getting rid of any kind of debris, mold, etc. And I still get that functionality when I spray on wet roots. So for me, it doesn't matter to spray on wet roots. Others don't like it. Others say it's not as effective. Personally, I've not had any bad experience with spraying hydrogen peroxide on wet roots. The thing with hydrogen peroxide as well, if you do buy an orchid and you go out and get one, it, it is important for the um, snail control. Sometimes in nurseries, they do have snails. They might have snail eggs that you don't see. If you, if you don't see a snail looping around there in your pot, there could be snail eggs and the hydrogen peroxide will take care of that. In my personal experience, whether it is dry, on dry media, dry roots or wet, I don't have any snails in my pots and I always work with wet roots. Sometimes if, you do, if you're in a hurry, you don't have time between cuts or anything like that. It's also quite okay just to take a paper towel or a cotton swab or something and you can speed up the process by wiping the blade down with the saturated kitchen towel or a cotton pad or something. This way, if you're in a hurry and you didn't manage to sterilize them ahead of time, or as I said, going between cuts, then you are ready to go and it evaporates much faster. And then of course, for me, I would put a little bit of, I only use olive oil. <laughs> I don't have any mechanical oil in the house, but I will, you know, wipe down the blades to avoid a little bit of oxidation here. So yeah, that's what I do to sterilize. I don't go into anything more advanced than that. So far, it has always worked well for me. And to be honest as well, in, um, in the past, before this collection came about, in the past, I actually never even did all this. I never did. Now, did I have some issues with my plants? Yeah, I did. I had, I had some, you know, fault molds and also some black mold. 
on with some rods. I always put it down to weather conditions, bad location, you know, um, not enough airflow. But you know, I can't say whether it was because I didn't use these things and implemented these tactics prior to handling my orchids. But you know, it's out there. Now that I know, I'm gonna use, take advantage of the additional knowledge that I have. And I, I do it regularly. If I don't see an issue on my roots, for example, when I get an orchid in and I don't see any issues on my roots, I don't use hydrogen peroxide because it strips them of everything else as well. Not just the nasties, but also the goodies. It just takes it all off. So if I see an orchid coming in and the roots are kind of nipped and munched and um, shortened, that has nothing to do with mechanical damage, then there has been a snail in there. And then I will apply. But if it's not necessary, I don't do it. I hope that this was of some help to you and uh, that you can go get back into getting your beautiful orchids. Let me know, please, in the comments below and anybody else that has questions or even suggestions on how to improve the method of sterilization of tools because, you know, we would all like to know and maybe everybody can learn from that. So Penny, it's always good to see you on my side of YouTube. <laughs> I really, really appreciate you. I hope that you're staying safe and that you're staying well and I look forward to seeing you next time. And everybody else, thank you for watching. We very much appreciate it here. Take care, be safe, bye.